credit where credit is due. Today we're talking about a few things I have been inspired by lately. Hey, it's Kara. Welcome to my Take at the Lake. So y'all have heard, most of you probably have heard me say time and time again, I'm all about giving credit where credit is due. Most of that is because I'm an English professor and plagiarism pisses me off. A bigger part of that is because I have just this huge streak of what is right, doing the right thing that drives me and everyone around me bananas. It'd be so much easier to not do the right thing. <laughs> Ugh, that's a story for another day. So I'm going to show you a few projects that I've been playing with in various stages of completion or incompletion but I just wanted to put this together because I think one of the reasons we're here is to inspire each other to learn from each other and I don't know if you've noticed or not but I don't mention any of the big names in this craft genre anymore because I don't watch them anymore I'm so angry about I have seen them take ideas from smaller channels and call them their own and and just keep gaining momentum and momentum one has over a hundred fifty thousand subscribers another one has over two hundred and some thousand subscribers this is a very small audience and they have time and again taken something a small channel put out and called it their own how do i know this because once i kind of figured out what was happening i would i would do my research and I would always find someone who's done it before that or right around the time or a couple weeks prior now that's not always that's not to say that's always the case that people are stealing ideas because I know from my own experience if I have an idea that I want to share and want to share and want to share and want to share and I sit on it and sit on it and sit on it I've not seen it anywhere else that's why I want to do it when I sit on it long enough someone else will do it they didn't steal anything from me I didn't put it out. So sometimes ideas are, it's just the time, and I get that. But I also know that art is stealing. <laughs> steal like an artist. Everything is a remix. We all study something we like, twist it, make it our own, make our own version of it. And that's how we learn, and that's how we grow, and that's what art is. However, it's always important to say where you got the idea. In my mind, in my world. Oh, I, whether it's a large channel or a small channel or a blog or a video, whatever it is, I was inspired by XYZ. That doesn't make you less of an artist. That makes you a good person. That's what that does. So, in order to walk the talk, I am showing you what I'm working on and not saying, oh, Look what I have come up with, because it's not my idea. I am not a one-man band. I do not operate in a vacuum, nor does anyone else. There's a hashtag out there called Love a Little Channel, I think. I think it's Jennifer Durdle, D-U-R-D-L-E, um, mentioned my channel once with that hashtag. Love a, I think it's Love a Little Channel. I'll, I'll flash it up here once I double check the proper wording. But that's a big deal. You know, we all we all do this not to talk to ourselves alone in a room with our craft supplies. We do it to reach an audience. We do it to inspire others. We do it to share ideas. Not so people can steal them and claim them as their own, but so people can take them and make them their own, but ideally say, hey, I was inspired by whatever it is rant over let's just get to it these are paint samples paint chips sort of they're awfully big comparatively uh, to the original and the original comes from a, a channel called robin dudley howes h-o-w-e-s the artsy bohemian and she did these wonderful paint strips and i'll flash a picture here and i'll link the video below uh, just fun, old-fashioned looking, and I love anything that looks old, especially art supplies. I recently showed a, an art, a digital kit that I bought to do 
a vintage art supply journal and I thought this would be perfect for it. Now I made mine in a hurry in the lazy way because I'm always in a hurry and I'm a lazy crafter. She made smaller strips. Now had I taken my piece of paper and measured it out I could have gotten five or six out of that piece of paper and they would have been a regular paint strip size but I didn't feel like that well, no I didn't want to measure and I didn't want to cut I wanted to fold in half and tear because that was faster and I folded it in half once and got two pieces and I took each of those two pieces and folded it half again that got me the four pieces so I have these nice torn edges on the edge she also did five versions five levels of color and I only did four just because these were bigger and I thought smaller smaller squares might have looked a little goofy I don't even know if I thought it that far out to be honest I just wanted to try it see what it looked like watch her video because she makes it very easy I'm not doing a demo because she's already done the demo I, I don't like to do what's already been done and and reinvent the wheel it's very simple I took a large that's what happens when you craft in every room of the house. You just have crap everywhere. I used my coffee watercolor, essentially. This is just instant coffee. There's a coffee video somewhere on my channel. I will link that below. I wet this and I took a fairly large brush, maybe even bigger than this. And I just painted the whole piece of paper before I tore it. So I had one piece of paper and I painted with my coffee. This is instant coffee, super hot water, very thick and concentrated. Then you let it dry out and then it becomes essentially a giant pan of watercolor coffee. Spritz it with water or coffee and just wet the whole paper front and back because if you want it to be vintage, look have the look of being old you don't want this on one side you don't want the front to look all super vintage and then when you flip it over have it be bright white that's just silly so if you're going to do vintage stuff that's not going to be glued down make sure to do the back so i watercolored with coffee front and back and let that dry completely then I, like I said, I folded it in half, tore it, folded it in half, tore it. This is cheap watercolor paper from a cheap watercolor pad. So it does have some nice deckling effect. It does have, you can see here, some tooth to it. It's, it's stamped tooth. It's artificial tooth because this is not watercolor paper. It's paper paper. It's pulp. No cotton. So it's kind of junky. Smooth on the one side. Which is funny, because if a paper has texture, why would it only be on the front? That's how you know it's stamped. Anyway, it does give a nice effect when you dry brush over it. You can see some of the tooth here. When it was folded and done, then I took a smaller brush. Just another junky brush. Back in with this coffee and first I wet the edges with uh, some plain water just so that they'd be nice and absorbent and then I went into my coffee and I just went along those edges sometimes I missed and that's okay because the idea here is to junk them up All right so some down here and then I decided she folded hers and put a little tab on top and I thought that was pretty cool so I did too uh, but I only did two of them that way. The other two I left plain, but I liked, I wanted them to be, you know, like these have been around a really long time. Oops, some of them got torn, you know. So then I went around, because again, if you have, I'll just tear this corner off. If you have vintage, vintage, vintage everywhere, but you have a bright white torn edge, shatters the illusion it's no longer vintage so we're going to vintage it up i'm going to wet my brush 
I always wet my brushes because it makes it easier to clean them. And I'm just going to wet that place that's bright, bright white, both sides, because, because, and then go into that paint, excuse me, that watercolor coffee paint thing, and just dirty up that white. Because I don't want it to be, I don't want the illusion to be broken. And I see so many, so many people do vintage, 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 and then bright white. Because they don't do the back, or they don't do the insides of things. I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs, and he, his father taught him, if you're going to, you have to make the back of the fence look as good as the front of the fence. You have to make the inside of the computer every bit as aesthetically pleasing and clean and beautiful as the outside of the computer. If you're going to have a vintage illusion, carry it through to the nth detail. Speaking of which, so then, so again, I'm going to, after that, that might be the only way mine is different than hers, but then then you just paint the swatches. Once the pa papers are, are done, you paint the swatches. She did five, I did four, just out of ease. Uh, this is gray, Payne's gray, mixed with ultramarine to get the the tone. And then the pure color. But it was so bright, it didn't look vintage to me, so I did add a little bit of gray to each of them. That's how I get the grayish, the old look. Because each one of these pure colors is pretty bright. Even on the, on the coffee dye. But one of the things in the name of making it look authentic is I just stapled these on you can't see the staples they're not shiny bright silver staples front or back because I painted them you can see right here I missed a spot I took brown paint and black paint this very brush it's got a nice even though it's junky it's got a nice uh, point to it this the one? No, this is the one that I missed. And you know if you can see it right there. See that shiny spot? I'm just gonna hit it with some brown. There's two shiny spots. Brown acrylic. I'll just go right over it. Just with the lightest of hand. Now it looks like a at least an old rusty staple. I can also take a tiny little bit of that coffee and go around so it looks like they they rusted a little bit it's all in the details it's all an illusion it's all an illusion and i i have to say i was thrilled to finally find a a decent place to use some of my fun sprays these are fun sprays this is just an old bed sheet fun sprays which are food coloring in water or watercolor watered down I just made some new ones. This is watercolor, but this was done with food coloring and coffee, coffee spray to get that vintagey look. You don't always have to coffee dye them. This is not coffee dyed. This is not coffee dyed. It come out beautifully. But I was thrilled to be able to have a place to use these. Now, these are going to be journaling cards in that vintage art supply journal so I like that they're bigger another thing that would add authenticity to this that I think Robin did that I have not done yet is to take a pen and make some kind of number or or give them a name so that adds a little bit or if you wanted to do just numbers for oh one I'm making these up as I go because I have no idea. I don't have to do the bottom one because that got tore off. Right? So that adds a little bit more authenticity to them. Now, that looks pretty pretty new to me, that bright pen. So what I might do is just take my old fingernail file and just mess it up a little bit. See, now it's kind of Oh, look at there. Don't get too carried away with the uh, 
file because you'll file down to white. Nobody wants white. So where it cracked, I just threw some coffee in there. That's why I always have coffee handy. You never know. Just spraying some water on my craft mat because it's too dark. I just want it. I just want a little bit. And if it gets too heavy handed, use your fingers to just kind of blot it out so that it doesn't. Can you see the difference between the fresh, bright, new, shiny, high tech writing and the grunged up, dirtied up? way better now these are watercolors so when they get wet they're, you can mock them up so don't get too carried away As my grandma would say don't get all tilly falutin I don't I don't know what that means exactly other than don't get too carried away <laughs> there I'll, I'll put in names and numbers on these maybe maybe not maybe I'll leave them they were unfinished I don't know but that is my inspired by number one I have a couple more for you here I made a video uh, making my winter 2024 journal cover project for my winter journal i did a whole bunch of videos over the course of two weeks and i hated them all so you probably won't ever see that one but i did both sides winter winter 2024 inside and out and i didn't get very far i i still have this much left of this side and i don't know if you know or not but i flip it over and i write the other way and so I tore off the winter pieces. I'll show you what's left of that. Here's a, just a big pile. I tore off the, the front piece that I had glued on and, and what I had glued in here. Decided to paint it instead of trying to put another piece of paper over it. Because there's still tape here from my tape runner. There's still some remnants of the glue that didn't come up and some of the paper stuck. So it's very textured and I didn't think a piece of paper would, would lay well. So I did this. And I will just quick like, I wasn't gonna do this, this wasn't part of the plan, but I hate that it's still plain. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a tutorial sort of. It's not really a tutorial, it's just how I did it this time. There's a million ways to do it, and I'm sure you've seen them this done before. But since I have all the stuff out, and since we're here, and since I never do this on camera, I might as well give it a go. Once again, I'm wetting my brush so that it's all I've done is spray some water on there, and I'm getting the water way down in here so that it's easier. Even though this is a junk brush, it's like a quarter a dollar store, you get a bag of them for. For a dollar twenty-five or whatever it is, uh, I still don't want to have to buy them every five minutes, so I try to take care of them. And it's a good habit, like putting your seatbelt on. You just do it, right? So my brush is now ready to paint. I take out all the water though because I don't want runny paint. And I'm just gonna play with these colors. One of the things I'm inspired by here are these colors. They always remind me of being a kid summers when i was a kid my mom would take me every every summer when lake season got near we would go to the dollar store i think it was kresge's at the time and she would buy me oh dear um so on the front of this i had just so i painted white acrylic let's put this paint back I 
painted lots of white because I wanted to cover up the notebook part. Composition book of unwasted paint out. Big page. This one looks fun. It's got lots of black. I'm just get rid of that. A little bit of paint that was left on there. I can take this off. Because I don't want everything to have a pink cast to it. I'm going to clean that brush off again. So I don't want the whole thing to look pink. And I'm just going to go over... Some of it still may show through and I'm getting texture because there was paper stuck here too and glue and all kinds of things. And that just adds to the grunginess, right? We love grunge. Because we're going to sit here and chat for a bit more. I'm going to wet that. Actually, I'm going to clean it out. Because we're going to come back and paint it here in just a minute. Because this is acrylic and I want it to dry fast. I, I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. You always want to keep your heat tool moving. Because this is paper and this is really hot. It's designed, it's not a hair dryer, it's a heat tool. It's really hot. It's designed to melt embossing powders, right? It's super hot. So if you're using a plain old hair dryer, even then, this is still paper and hair dryers can get very hot. Heat tools get way hotter. So I always move it around. Just like it's the hairstylist in me too. You never just blow dry somebody's hair and aim that hot air at their head and never move it you're always moving it so you don't burn anyone so just get in the habit of moving your gun around even though it's a you know even if you're only working on a playing card keep it moving so that you don't set anything on fire how do you know when it's done there aren't any shiny spots i can see a shiny spot and some shiny spots when you can't see any shine, if you use the back of your hand, you can, it, oh, it's still pretty gummy. You can still feel the moisture in it, but I don't think it's going to, you want it to be dry enough so that the paint's not moving around. So let's try this again. I noticed that this neon paint, these are from Walmart neon colors. They're about $2.30 a, a bottle. I noticed that they're sort of watery, uh, that it takes several coats to be vibrant. They're not watery, that's not the right word. They're transparent, I guess would be a better word. Still a lot of white in that brush, and I don't want a soft baby pink. I want I want neon bubblegum pink is what I want. See, you can still see quite a bit of that white through that pink. Remember, if it's not close enough, if you're on a mobile device like an iPad or your smartphone, you can... Just like you zoom in with pictures, you can open it up and do this on your screen. You can zoom right down to where and, and move the screen around so you can see up close what people are doing. For because a lot of people, you know, they they film from the ceiling when they're doing detail work.
find another page because there's way too much pink in there. Or enough pink, I should say. Just making, I try to make different marks all the time. So that all my pages, so there's variety. takes quite a bit of paint. You see all the, the white that's still there? Just keep loading it up. Very large project with lots of black acrylic paint so I had a lot of brush cleaning to do one of my favorite tools this is one of my watercolor things it's an old roll of toilet paper usually I take the core out I don't know why I didn't when it's half used I do have a bigger one that I've shown before and it's just too big use it lose a whole bunch of it whatever when it's almost gone squish it down and then cover it with either a nice piece, this is a t-shirt material, a nice soft piece of t-shirt. I also like to use the old fashioned cotton thermal underwear. It has a little bit of tooth to it, a little texture and it helps clean your brush. But I wanna show you why I love this tool so much. So I'm cleaning off this brush. I want all the blue out of here and there's still quite a bit of white in here. But watch what happens because of this toilet paper in this rag. It just soaks it up down through that t-shirt right into that toilet paper so fast to clean and when you're watercoloring this isn't a, a watercolor brush but when you're watercoloring to get all that dirty water out of there it's it's brilliant I love this I think I want to say Bill Borden taught me that but I can't be sure So this happens once in a while. Shake your paint up good. One of the things I, I kind of was bummed I didn't do the other day when I was doing this, but I'm going to do it now, is I'm going to take this these paints and just do the edges. Just real lightly. My, my bookmark got hit, and I just think it's so cool the way it's dirty and it all mucked up, so I'm going to add some more and uh, do these edges. It's not very wintry, but it's perfect for spring and that's the side I'm working on. So there. Put it up here too if you want. So I'll do the paint while we're doing it. Oh, whoopsie. There. I just wanted to dirty them up a little bit, brighten them up a little bit. And now I have. Look out, I already had this one going. That's awesome. No paint wasted. Look at that. Even my junky brushes, I, I, if they're round brushes, I always 
reshape them back into their point. And I'm, I'm spinning it as I do this so that I'm spinning it all the way around and getting it back to that nice point. Again, even though it's a cheap brush, it came in a package of, I don't know, 32 brushes for $5. It's not anything wonderful, but I only want to buy those once a year. I don't want to have to buy them every five minutes because I've not taken care of them. So, red, blue, and yellow, all the three primaries. I've made sure to overlap so that the red and blue made a purple, and the red and yellow made a an orange, and the yellow and blue made a green. So I, I used a limited palette of three colors, the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. In this case, blue, yellow, and hot pink. It all works and made sure to overlap a little bit to get the secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. Isn't that fun? I just love, 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 love these colors. You can see my fingerprints in here from the oils on my hand. There's a, this is bizarre. I have no idea what this is. There's a perfect circle right there and no joke. 100% there's an eye and an eye and a smiley face. I mean, it is crystal clear. It's like a sticker, but you saw me paint it. There's no sticker there. There's nothing on the other side. What is up with that? Oh, where'd he go? Look! It's sideways on the page. I would never put a sticker sideways on the page because here's where it is. Right here, facing that way. <laughs> wow! I think we have just, we have, we have just observed a miracle of some sort. <laughs> so, I still have my yellow. I'm gonna do this. So, yeah, I try to coordinate my, my paint leftovers to pages that go together and colors that go together. Because eventually I'm going to do something wonderful with that book. I don't know what yet. But she's getting filled up pretty quick, which is awesome. So you want to watch that again because I just think this is really cool. Look at all that dirty water getting sucked right down into there. And it takes quite a bit to go all the way through. Okay, so what next? We let that dry, dry, dry. Okay, the next step is I got out some mark making stuff. This is a trivet from Walmart that I got. I think it was 96 cents. It was very cheap, maybe $1.96. It's just a square trivet with a sort of a honeycomb pattern. And started mark making, wetting my brush off camera. I'm just going to get some paint on here. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not going to put it down perfectly anyway. So where I spattered that, I'll cover it up. Or not. orange juice cap. I have some white on my paper. I'm just gonna, on my palette, this is a 50 cents. They have this gray color again, a nice neutral gray. They have it this year again at Walmart. I think they're 50 cents. Great palettes because they're a neutral color. Really cool. So I just spun that cap around in my I'm going to hit this because I don't want to mess up my honeycombs. That's going to probably drive me crazy. I'll probably find some kind of something to print and put over it. Kind of like 
that. So then some circles. I like to intertwine the circles. I like to have them off the page a little bit. Sometimes three, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, it's better if they're not. Sort of random, but give it some thought. Laundry soap cap, much bigger circle. And the same thing, I'm just gonna spin it around and get black paint. All on it. Do the same thing. Okay, now before these stick together completely, I'm going to fan through them a little bit. Because they will stick together, but if you catch them when they're, before they're 100% dry, there's a lot less chance of tearing them. And I want it to be fun, not irritating. I usually do my journaling first thing in the morning if I journal, and I... I know I said I did a video about why I don't journal anymore for the other channel for PCU and I hated it so I didn't post it or edit it and I I believe it was Coralie at Magic by the Ocean she said you hate it but we wouldn't know that you hate it we would probably like it and I appreciate that Coralie that's sweet of you to say and and I still may post them eventually. I don't know. I don't know. Then they turn out so cool. I have the orange and some of the purple and some of the green all in here too. I feel like I have to say that when I did the front of this, I did the blue and then I went and I worked on the computer. And when that was an hour or two later, when it was 100% dry... I came back and I did the pink and went and did some work repeatedly. I never ever hit it with the heat gun like I'm doing here to speed things up for this process video because I don't want things to move once I get them down there. The very last step is to take this brush that we've been using and it's, it's damp, of course, we've been using it, it's damp. And I'm gonna take just the tiniest bit of white paint on it. I'm gonna go to my, a scrap piece of paper or my notebook of unwasted paint. And I'm just gonna put some down because I, I want a dry brush now and I don't want a big white hunk of paint like that. So I'm, I'm getting it to where I can control it. And in these super bright spots, I just went through and added some, some dry brush just to, to tone that down just a little bit. Even though I want it to be bright, in some places I felt like it was just a little too much. So there. So I just added a little bit of dry brush. See, it's moving that black. It's not 100% dry even though I hit it with the gun. So I don't like to use the gun. But it's on the inside. It's alright. I'm going to put some kind of something there. So I'm looking in my collection of words here. I was going to use flaws and all, but do you see the difference between bright white and creamy white? I don't know if it's coming through so much on camera, but that would drive me bananas. This is bright. This is bright, bright white. And I want something white that's 
as bright as that white is. So maybe that. Where'd that go? I don't know. Classic favorites. I could put that on there too, but I'm not gonna. I don't see the little smiley face anymore. Simple and messy. That gets rid of that white blob that would have driven me up the wall. So I was not planning to do any show and tell like tutorial how to paint any, you know, like you don't need to know how to do this. It's just how I did this. So I will save my other, uh, inspired by it'll just be another video i think you'll be surprised at both of them i was <laughs> until we meet again you go love up your beastlies and i will catch you on the flip side my take at the lake out for now